But before I could even think another thought, I was snatched up off of my feet by a very, very large demon. Um, and of course, for me, I didn't know what had happened. It was like getting hit by a truck uh, and having no clue that it was ever coming. Um, this thing had come up on, come up behind me so fast. Um, and it caught me by complete surprise, and it was so big. Um, I can't possibly begin to describe what it's like being, uh, what it feels like to be in the grips of something that big. But I'll, I'll do my best. Um, one minute I'm standing there, and the next minute I'm leaning backwards like this. My feet are out, more or less, in front of me, and they're popping. And I have this pain just shooting from my head to my feet, like a bolt of electricity, but it's not stopping. It's like being constantly shot or electrocuted. Um, and I had this pounding sensation, this hurt, hurting pounding sensation coming from my left shoulder that hurts even worse than the, this electricity that's running to my body and I look to my left and I see these fingers which come down to roughly the bottom of my chest and it was even hard to look over to the side because the, the depth of its hand was like this the width of its hand was like this I mean it literally went from the side of my neck up to maybe past the end of my shoulder the width of its hand all I know is the fingers were very big. Each one was about this big around and roughly about this long. And this thing was crushing my left shoulder. And uh, this thing had a hold of me and I'm looking down at these fingers and I'm just thinking to myself, what is this that has a hold of me? And as I'm thinking this, I understand now also in retrospect that anything that you think in this place can be heard as if you had spoken it out loud. And this thing, had me like this and was just smiling at me it looked back and it was smiling at me waiting for me to look at it and uh, when I looked over my shoulder and up at it it was already staring at me and I understand now that it had heard what I was thinking and just wanted to give me a nice little shock you know on top of the pain that I was already experiencing um, just because of the grotesqueness uh, of his face I mean this thing was grotesque um, and it was huge. Um, overall, the thing, and I know this sounds already more crazy than everything that I've already said, but this thing is 13 feet tall. And it's not like I sat there and said, okay, uh, stand still, let me grab a, a step ladder and measure you. Uh, where's my tape measure? You don't know. No. Anything that you want to know in this place, all you have to do is ask it ask it in your mind or ask it out loud and the answer will be given to you it doesn't matter um, and I thought to myself how big is this thing and it, the answer immediately came to me 13 feet it was exactly exactly 13 feet tall um, and I didn't ask myself how much it weighed otherwise I would know that too all I know is the thing was huge it was built like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. I mean, just whipped full of muscles. It had no hair whatsoever on its body. None. Um, like, no hair up here, no mustache, no beard, no hair on the knuckles like I have. Um, just just um, completely hairless. Um, it's completely humanoid in shape, though. I mean, it had two legs, two arms, one mouth, one nose, two ears. Other than that, it looked completely human. Um, the differences was this, where our eyes are white. Um, it was yellow. And um, where the iris of our eyes can be green or blue or brown, um, it was um, uh, gold. And uh, diamond shaped like a snake's. It had the only thing that looked really strange about its teeth was it had, where we had our canines, it had two tusks 
coming up out of its mouth like a boar, uh, like a wild pig. Um, it was a I said it was just very large, 13 feet tall, and uh, just extremely muscular. And uh, this thing, like I said, it just picked me up like uh, I weighed nothing to it. And uh, it was taking me along for a ride. And uh, But just to, I only looked at its face for, I would say, a second. And that's all that it took. Yeah, I was just... As a man, I'm not afraid of any other man on the face of this earth. I will fight anybody. I don't care how much bigger they are than me. But this thing, there was, there was no fighting it. I mean, it was, it was far too big. I mean, 13 feet tall versus 6 feet tall. I could stack another one of me on top of my head and still not be as tall as it. You know, and if I had to guess, I would say roughly about in between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds. I don't know for sure. I'm just guessing, but I would say that's a pretty fair estimate. Um, um, the thing, like I said, it just picked me up and took off with me. And I'm not sure if my feet were popping out of just uh, sheer pain or if it was the speed at which we were moving. But this thing was running. It had me by one hand, by the shoulder. It had me by the shoulder with one hand. And uh, it was moving at a very, very fast velocity. If I would guess, I would say probably at over 80 to 100 miles an hour. Um, just rough guess. Um, it may have been faster than that, I don't know. But all I know is the thing was moving very, very fast and uh, had complete control. I mean, just, um, there was nothing, nothing at all I could do to get away or anything like that. And uh, I looked at its face for only a second and that was enough to scare me. Um, but anyway, um, this, I understood that it was taking me to the portion that I did not, certainly anyone would not want to go to, which was the fire and brimstone portion. It was going to take me to that fire lake and cast me in, and I understood that. And when I understood that, it it was mortally appalling, is the only way I can put it. I mean, I just, it played over and over in my head again. It's taking me to hell, it's taking me to hell, it's taking me to hell. And uh, there was just nothing I could do. Nothing I could do to stop it, nothing I could do to prevent it. And uh, I just kind of drop my head a lot of people that used to call themselves Christians are there and uh, and it's because they didn't really devote their life to God they lived one foot in and one foot out like I did you know but as I was thinking this to myself that I'm not such a bad guy why am I ending up here that's when that light appeared and uh, I looked up at it, it looked like a star off far off in the night sky something so tiny and insignificant and far away that it couldn't possibly help me and then I saw it it moved off to the left a little bit and I picked my eyes up you know and my head up and I looked at it and I thought to myself did we just change direction or did it move you know and it went back to the right and uh, I thought for myself no for certain we didn't change direction it moved and I thought to myself well, what is that and as I thought that and began to focus in on it, it just came rushing at me like a, the only way I can describe it is the speed of this thing was like a bolt of lightning. It came at me so fast that one moment it was just like a tiny little star in the night sky and the next minute, white, bright, blinding white light. And his hand was reaching down to me and it was an angel. myself I'm going to reach up there and grab his hand and this hand is going to save me because that's all that I saw was just a hand 
but uh, my head just my head knew what to do. It was like having a baseball throw at your head. Somebody says heads up, and you just reach up and grab it. It's a reflex. My hand just reflects, and a reflex just jumped up and grabbed this angel's head. And as soon as I touched its head, we were all three. We were all motionless and all standing back up on this ground that you can't see. And uh, this, this, uh, this beast, this demon, is still had me by the shoulder. It was kind of almost even leaned over a little bit to grab me by the shoulder. And uh, I could uh, instinctively I knew to stand still because if I had moved, I know that it would have ripped my shoulder and my arm off at the same time and just beat me with it. I mean, the thing was just that massively strong. I know, I knew, and I knew within me there was something telling me, don't, don't move, don't move. And, uh, and I'm just standing there staring up, looking at this angel. And the angel itself, to describe it for you, was nine feet, six inches tall. It had brown, wavy hair pushed to the back. It had an olive color skin. Um, it wasn't really white, it wasn't really black, it was somewhere in between, but the light that was emanating from within it was so bright white that it almost practically overshadowed the color of its skin. You couldn't even really, you had to stare to see the color of its, of, of its skin, and I keep saying it because it's an it. It's not really a he or a she. Um, although the body is shaped like a he, okay, it's shaped like a male. When you look at its face, the face is like the most handsome man that you've ever seen blended in perfectly with the most beautiful woman that you've ever seen. I mean, when you look at this angel, you think to yourself, wow, he is beautiful. And I know that's some odd words to say. I know English uh, vernacular. The, the male is known as handsome and the female is known as beautiful. But uh, this angel was absolutely beautiful. There's no other words for it. And uh, its eyes were uh, blue, and I mean, when I mean blue, I mean perfect blue. Like, like someone took a portion of the sky and put it in its eyes, or dipped a cup out of the ocean and poured it into its eye. There was no flaw in it, no flaw. Um, perfectly beautiful in all ways. Um, other than its face looking like uh, the cross between a man and a woman, and I don't mean like, oh, is it pet? You know, no. I mean, just beautiful. Um, it was completely shaped like a man. Uh, you could see it's underneath its white robe. It had chest and it had strong arms. Um, it had an Adam's apple. I mean, it was every bit shaped like a man and a strong one. I mean, just strong, but not like overly ridiculous like this it wasn't bodybuilder it was more like fitness trainer strong um, it wasn't like bodybuilder strong where it just had muscles popping out of everywhere it shouldn't have been uh, like this demon um, but you could tell it was this angel was there to fight and uh, he had on a white robe it was cut down in the V in the front uh, with gold lace I guess I don't even know what to call it, like embroidered gold around the edges of its collar, and uh, not lace, but embroidered gold, and uh, the sleeves came just below the elbows, and the, it, this robe was a, kind of like a white uh, Roman tunic robe, I guess that would be the way, uh, best way of putting it, and it came just below its knees, so its knees and its elbows were covered, um, and I was just so blown away by the beauty of, uh, of it that I didn't even really check to see if it had any shoes on or not. I don't really remember. All I know is uh, it was big. Uh, not as quite as big as the demon, but big enough. And uh, I'm looking up at it and I'm just blown away by its brightness and its beauty. And uh, at the same time, I'm just frozen in place because I know that, that if I move this thing, it's going to rip my shoulder off and just beat me with my arm. And uh, this thing, I can feel its anger, um, this demon's anger, like like heat from a fire. And uh, it 
turns around like this to see what had stopped it and why. It wanted to know what had stopped it and why. Uh, because technically I was right where I belonged and uh, once you're there in hell you, you don't normally get a chance to leave. Um, so it owned me like a piece of furniture, like, like uh, your car. Uh, it owned me and it wanted to know why it was being stopped so it turned around and was ready to fight make no mistake uh, this demon was ready to get down in the worst way uh, but it as it whipped around this angel just its speed was incredible and it just rushed forward and with an open palm hit this demon and it had to angle its arm upwards at about the height of its head to hit this demon in the chest and it hit this demon with such power I mean I I can't describe the fierceness of, of the power of this thing but it hit this demon with such force that its hand was literally ripped from my shoulder it it had no clue what had hit it by the time it had even turned its head it was already hit and this demon uh, was hit with such force that it literally folded up and started flying backwards, folded in half like this, flying backwards. And uh, I'm just watching it fly backwards and skip off this ground that you can't see like a, like a stone over water. And um, this angel looked at me and he called me by a long name. And I un immediately understood it to be mine. It was a heavenly name. But as soon as it called me this name, it took it from my mind. It called me this name to let me know that, um, more or less, that I still have a chance to make it into heaven. You know, like I have a heavenly name, I squandered it, I wasted it. And if this had been my ultimate time, my last breath, for real uh, that's where I would have stayed but when he called me this long name it was a feeling of home it looked at me and it began to speak to me and its voice was like uh, like a waterfall if a waterfall could speak it was like a rushing sound in your ears like Sean and uh, I understood later on that it was converting my understanding to understand its language. It didn't descend down to my broken language of English. It elevated me up to understand its language. It messed with my mind, for lack of better words. But it elevated my understanding. And uh, he looks at me and he says, Hello, my name is Michael. <laughs> and I, I didn't do that this was the Archangel of the Bible that that um, it spoke of the, Arch, the Archangel Michael and uh, I can tell you for certain I've seen them both I've seen the Archangel and I've seen Jesus and they look nothing alike and they are not the same being um, But anyway, he said, uh, he began to speak to me, but I got distracted by this demon that had gotten back up and was coming back after me. It was coming back to get me. And it was coming back to fight this angel for my soul. And uh, so I turned back because I knew that it was coming. I'm sorry. Uh, so it was, this angel was still talking to me, so I wasn't really listening to it. I was too focused in on this thing, and it was getting bigger. It was running back after me, and it was getting faster, and it was getting bigger, so it was coming back after me, you know, from this great distance that this angel hit it. And uh, he, so I looked back at him like, whatever you got to say, please just hurry up and say it, and if you get me out of here, please get me out of here. You know, and this is what I was literally thinking. You know, and he just looked at me and he gave me a, a, a saddened look. And he looked at me and he just goes, Your time has not yet come. It's time for you to go. 
and he points his finger and when I step in that direction my soul immediately went back to my body just as fast as I had l appeared in this place I left this place and I was back in my body laying on that cot where I knew I should have my eyes opened and it took me a good 20 minutes to uh, get to walking again simply because my entire body had fallen asleep and uh, I'm almost certain that after having been dead for eight minutes that there there must have been angels there jump-starting everything in my body again because there would have been no blood flowing anywhere.